Well, the original plan for today was to uh, get the Airco welder out, wire it up temporarily and plug it in out here in the yard and uh, try and do a little welding with it to make sure it's working before I go through the trouble of moving it down into the basement and wiring it in with a permanent electrical connection. Um, but I ended up messing around with the Oliver, trying to uh, get the, uh, playing around with the RPMs on the engine, trying to get the shuttle shift to work correctly. Seeing that maybe if the RPMs were lower, if that uh, torque converter would stop, uh, you know, if the tractor would stop from moving unless you gave it some throttle. But that didn't work out. Anyways, uh, running out of time today because I got two baseball games today that I got kids playing in. So trying to get something done. Um, coolant level was low on the Oliver. I thought I'd mention this. The coolant level was low on the Oliver. I topped it off. I drove it a little bit and I saw a little bit of coolant coming out of the top and I figured well I just topped it off a little too much. What bothers me is it was black. Oil. Dirty oil floating on top of the coolant coming out of the top. I've got oil getting into my cooling system. So not too happy about that um, and I'm not gonna deal with that right now I'm gonna run it the way it is which is probably bad but uh, I've got no other choice I don't have anything else that can lift some of this heavy stuff so what we're gonna do today hopefully is maybe start disassembling the Wells index mill to the point where I can get it down the bulkhead stairs this look like Ooh. oh lots of rust on here I don't like it this is what I get for leaving this thing out here under a tarp all summer I bought this in the spring and it sat out here and uh, this isn't too bad over here here on the end though that's that's some pretty significant rust the handles uh, just a smidge on the ways here. You can actually still see the scraping marks on that, so that's not too bad. Got some on the end of the shaft here. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm not happy with myself at all. This thing was in rust-free condition when I got it. Even got some rust here on the dovetails here of the ram. Oh, look at the draw bar. Triple tarp this thing. So that's all condensation. I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this head unit off. And uh, in order to do that, uh, I've got to unbolt, I believe, these nuts. And I think that I can actually get this whole thing to separate. But I'm going to want to disconnect this cable. So I can either disconnect it from the drum switch or disconnect it from where it goes in this junction box. Where apparently they're tapping off the three phase to get 120 volts to run lights. Oh, interesting. So uh, I'm going to disconnect it from here. Oh, all right. That explains the mystery. Here's how they're getting their 120 volts to run this outlet. They're coming off of one of the three phases. All right. And then they're using the ground as the return. But interestingly enough, there's no ground wire that was coming in here by the looks of it. They're just using the ground that's running back to the to the head. So that's not good. Because then if the machine's not grounded, that's floating. And what I mean by floating is that there could be a potential for voltage on the machine, touch the table, and then touch a better ground, and you got current flow through your body. Not good. But anyways, you don't want to use your uh, ground as your return path. Pretty sure that's a code violation. Not an electrician, but sometimes they try and do that in old houses. And that's a no-no. Because if you end up with a bad ground connection down at the box, it can be a fire hazard, I think. I think that's why they originally banned that kind of silly activity. Anyway, so uh, I'll just disconnect these three wires and the ground wire here and loosen this clamp and I can take this all out. 
I'm probably going to keep this lamp. I like the flexible, this is the really old retro style arm on here. Although, I don't know about that. I don't know about that outlet, but the shade. It's got this weird plastic basket shield on it. That's because that shade's going to get hot. And I guess you don't want to brush up against it. Ow! And burn yourself. But, uh, so I, I'm going to just take these two screws off. That'll take this bracket off. And this just plugs in. It's already unplugged. So I could take that whole uh, bracket and the light off. Now, I know to swivel this head, you have to loosen these four nuts. And then you turn this screw right here. Or this, this right here. You turn this. And it'll rotate. So there's a worm gear assembly in there. What I don't know for sure is whether or not if I take all of these nuts off, whether or not this can be pulled, just pulled straight out that way. I think that's how this comes apart. All right, loosening the, uh, all the nuts. I did see this open up a little bit here. So I think I'm on the right track, but now I gotta get this thing supported. All right, the trick here, it's supporting it correctly. So I move the loader forward so that my point of attachment to the chain is right about here. Now, obviously, an easy place to attach this to would be to just loop the chain through this bracket right here, like so. Now the problem I have with that is that when this pulls off of here and it's no longer being supported by that gear ring, this is going to want to flip. This heavy head right here will come smashing down on the table and things are going to get damaged. So what I need to do is I need to be able to support it here and at the same time I want to be able to support it back here where the motor and the head and all of this weight is. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to take this strap, the sling, and I'm going to put this sling back here, like so. So in order for me to have the sling there, which I'm thinking maybe even here, trick is putting it somewhere so that when there's tension on it it doesn't break something off. Look, I got an oil cup right here. I got the handle for the, uh, the back gear. Of course there's this handle here for the speed. Right now I'm thinking this is going to be the best spot. So I'm going to bring that loader down. Here. Now that I've got this hooked on here, I'm going to bring the loader up just a smidge and start tightening up this sling so I can get a good idea for where I want uh, what I want the length of that other chain to be. messing with the idle setting on that tractor today and I put it a little too low. <laughs> use, the, uh, use the hand throttle. Alright, this is going to pop off of here and shear and off, so that's bad. Work. Go get a dead blow mallet and a crowbar. Alrighty, I got a small crowbar. I got two uh, older large screwdrivers that I use as pry bars. 
got no tension on this yet. Got tension on here. I think I'm going to put some tension on this. slipping off of the edge here. Can't really get a good spot to pry on this. One inch. I'm going to try moving the ram back and seeing if I can actually put some force. That should act as if it's trying to pull out of the back of that. Can't believe I'm already almost out of time. Be that does. Well, it definitely wants to pull it back that way. So I guess I should keep this back this way some. Give a little tension. It should be keeping tension on where I want it. I'll just tighten it. Rotating it at this point would do anything for me. Seems to do anything. Well, I've resorted to wedging screwdrivers in here to create a prying action, and I'm not proud of myself. I really didn't want to do that, but I've got this to open up this far now, and it still won't come off. I can't tell if it's tilting down this way too much. Well, I'm almost out of time, so I put the nuts back on um, far enough so they're grabbing well. This one, I had trouble getting it back on because I've already managed to damage the end of the threads just a little bit, prying on this. I was sticking the bar in there and trying to pry on that bolt to push it out. Uh, it was obviously a mistake. But anyways, I uh, now I'm going to take the tension off of this thing. The head shouldn't fall off because I got the nuts on there. And I should be able to uh, put the tarp back on this. we got more rain moving in tomorrow. Which means I won't be able to get back to this for at least a day, which I'm not too thrilled about, but it is what it is.